Hi everybody, thanks for joining us for our March 2022 What's New and Next with Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops webinar. Our presenters today will walk you through some of the key updates and the feature enhancements to provide you with a really comprehensive view of all that's new and exciting from a Citrix virtualization perspective. Today's updates will take approximately 45 to 50 minutes, allowing time for us to answer questions at the end. Of course, if you do have questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to ask them in the Q&A chat window on your screen. We will do our best to respond to as many as we can. We'll also be providing a summary containing a complete list of the resources and links that are used within the presentation. So please do be on the lookout for this handout as it's uploaded towards the end. Finally, I would like to confirm that today's presentation will also be recorded and made available on demand. And so with that, now I'll hand it over to our presenters and we can get things started. Alan? All right, thanks for kicking us off there, Luis, and good day, everyone. I'm Alan Fermansky with the product marketing team, and joining me is my colleague, Monica. Hi, all. Monica Grismer. I'm also on the product marketing team. Really excited to be here today. Excellent. So we'll go ahead and we'll jump right in. A lot of updates to share, though, of course, before we get started, we do need to mention that some of the statements we'll be making are forward looking. So just keep that in mind in terms of the development, release and timing of some of these features and components are at our discretion. So just getting the, the legal aspects out of the way at the start. And moving on now, we've got a very exciting announcement to uh, begin with here around the new long-term service release. So take it away on that one, Monica. Yeah, thanks, Alan. So really, really excited. I know this has been long awaited, but we are introducing today the Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop 7 2203 long-term service release. Try to say that five times fast. I know it's a mouthful, but I know this has been a long awaited release for customers, especially in highly regulated industries. So let's dive into what this means for you. For those of you that aren't as familiar with our release vehicles or maybe the long-term service release specifically, the virtual apps and desktops product line has three different vehicles for releases. Far left is the LTSR, and this comes out every two to three years. So those of you that have been with us for a while know the last one that came out was in December of 2019, being the 1912 LTSR. And that offers more predictable maintenance with cumulative updates that are rolled up patches and bug fixes. But for those of you who want to get features on a more regular cadence and might still be operating on premises, we also offer the current release vehicle, which comes out, we target about quarterly, and you have access to new features and functionalities on that quarterly basis. But then on the far right, as we all know, we've been making this move to the cloud, the whole industry has, and the Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop Cloud Service is offers our most continuous updates for features, bug fixes, patches, you name it. So you don't have to perform those sometimes cumbersome updates all at once. You get it more rolling out on a regular basis within the cloud. Also wanted to kick off this presentation with this slide because we're going to be showcasing today both on-premises and cloud features that I'm sure you all will love. I mentioned the 1912 just a moment ago, the 1912 long-term service release, but for those of you operating on our LTSRs, maybe 715, maybe as far back as 7.6, I wanted to mention that you do get five years of support on a long-term service release, and you can also add an additional five years support past that time. But I wanna mention here, the 715 Zen App Zen Desktop long-term service release is targeted to reach end of life in August of this year. So you could extend that support and maintenance period at an additional cost, but if you're looking at an inflection point within your environments, I say why not make the move to the 2203 long-term service release? It's the latest and greatest, and you get the latest features, updates, and patches. So to that point, 
you might be saying, okay, Monica, this sounds all well and good, but what exactly is in this 2203 release? Well, I'll tell you that there's over two years of features mixed in here. So you've got Teams optimizations, session recording, Linux enhancements, all wrapped up into one release. So if that isn't enticing enough, you can see here we've got a chart that is a running matrix of every current release since 1912 came out. And we'll link at the end to this matrix specifically. We'll give you a handout during or at the end of this webinar with all of the links you're going to need. But also compelling reasons to move. Think of the security patches that you may have missed out on or the operating systems that you need to update to just to further enhance the performance of and security of your environments. Additionally, performance gains and scalability gains in the past two years have been really great. So take full advantage of that. So lots to love in the long-term service release. Don't you agree, Alan? I wholeheartedly agree, Monica. And those are great points. And we realize that some of our enterprise customers maybe don't need all the bells and whistles, so to speak, of the latest and greatest release. But like you mentioned, just gaining performance benefits, scalability benefits, and cost savings, that's something that you can realize right from the get-go when you upgrade to the latest LTSR here. Totally. And to that point, I also wanted to mention thinking of operating systems. So you may be on 7.15 today leveraging Server 2012. And if you want to make that move to 2203, it would be a great time and you would need to update your server operating systems as well. So I was having a conversation um, just the other week with an SE about these charts specifically. And I think they're a really good way to kind of distill down what exactly is supported in each of our long-term service releases and gives you a visual representation of how and when you may need to make a move to a new operating system. So just be mindful here that you'll need to op um, upgrade your server or VDAs first before moving to the newest LTSR. And then also we showcase on the bottom right here what Linux VDA versions we also support. So a lot of great stuff and we've added Windows 11 and Server 2022 support in the 2203 LTSR. So I know that was a lot of information up front about our long-term service release, but we have some other exciting announcements rolled into this release that I am going to pass over to Alan to tell you more about. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely great, Monica. And I think the takeaway there is that the LTSR is here and it's time to start planning your upgrade to this version, whether you're an on-premises customer looking to make that move to this LTSR version, or even if you're a Citrix Cloud customer looking to take advantage of this LTSR VDA. The choice is yours, but now is the time to begin planning that upgrade. So on a related note, when we talk about rights and licensing and the concept of hybrid cloud, we have this exciting update around the new plan for hybrid rights. So previously, if you were on the transition and trade-up path, or TTU as we would affectionately call it, you had several years to essentially make that move from your on-premises environment to a Citrix cloud deployment with the apps and desktop service, right? That's the transition part. And then trading up would be something like moving from advanced edition to premium. But the idea is that you would make the move to Citrix Cloud regardless at some point and then no longer be running a customer managed environment, whether that customer managed environment was on premises or in the cloud. Now, granted, you could absolutely take advantage of on premises capacity through a resource location, right? So you can definitely do that. But let me throw out a couple use cases here. Say you're a manufacturing company and you need to run some apps in a remote manufacturing plant that these apps are very latency sensitive and you really need to run everything locally on the LAN, right? So your apps, your workloads, your brokering, your gateway, while maybe for some other users, you want to explore cloud for them, right? So you wouldn't be able to do that with a traditional customer managed environment or 
set it up in an offline capacity in that way. Maybe you're a government institution and you also have requirements to run everything 100% local, but you also want to explore cloud on your terms. Well, again, you wouldn't be able to achieve this. And these are just two examples. We've heard you, our customer, and as a result of that, we're very pleased to announce what we're calling the future of hybrid rights, which is a true hybrid rights model that lets you run both a cloud-based management plane with Citrix Cloud. In addition, you can also run a separate customer managed deployment, either on premises or within the cloud provider of your choice. So this new 2203 release will reinstate the ability to both deploy on and provision to public clouds as required. So this is going to give you the ultimate flexibility to meet your business requirements, mixing and matching as it makes sense to do so. And we're incredibly excited about it. This is true hybrid rights for 2203. It will be coming soon with an updated hybrid rights license. So be on the lookout for that coming to your my account area of Citrix.com over the coming weeks. So incredibly exciting news here, Monica, a true hybrid rights model for our customers to mix and match as they deem necessary. Yes, I know this was definitely a highly anticipated ask from our customers and I'm really excited to have it reintroduced in this long-term service release. Absolutely, 100%. Following up on your announcement, Monica, around the LTSR version, keep in mind that LTSR is also relevant to Workspace App on the client side. And this provides that predictable maintenance, allowing our customers to focus on a specific version family. The support timeline here is three years, unlike the five years that we have on the backend infrastructure. Uh, maintenance timeline of 15 to 18 months and cumulative updates that occur every two months. So the corresponding 2203 LTSR workspace app is the version that we would recommend. And remember, this is a baseline component when we talk about baseline and optional components for full LTSR compatibility. Now, from a feature perspective, this workspace app will support the latest security standard of TLS 1.3, as well as our SaaS and web app launching capability through Citrix Secure Browser Service, which is our throwaway Linux browser service. And naturally, the Workspace app LTSR version, as I'm sure many of you know, is available for Windows only. But we always recommend customers with endpoints on other platforms like Linux and Mac and, and mobile platforms that you ensure that those are updated as well. Now, on this note, I do want to mention how you can begin thinking about the upgrade strategy for your endpoints. We have visibility through Citrix Director to get an understanding of what Workspace app versions you're on today. And there is even further enhanced visibility that can be obtained through our Citrix Analytics solution, Analytics for Performance. Plus, Workspace app supports things like the auto upgrade, as well as package installs through the ESD software distribution solution of your choice and silent installs. So there's plenty of options to go ahead and deploy the latest workspace app here with full GPO controls as well. Great, thank you, Alan. I know that was a ton of great information on the long-term service release, but the latter half of this webinar, we really wanted to focus on all of the latest and greatest updates, both on-premises and in the cloud. So to that point, I'm gonna kick us off with some AWS updates. So we are definitely continuing to grow our relationship with AWS, and the proof is in the continuous rollout of features when operating on top of AWS. So for example, we've introduced support for Eliminate Volume Worker for ID disk creation in AWS, and this really will reduce cost and complexity for maintaining volume worker operations. And this is an additional potential improvement for machine creation time. In the middle there, you see that as a part of our scale and performance initiatives, we're aiming to reduce the number of describe volumes, uh, describe volume API calls by batching them during power on action. And then lastly, we've increased the number of recommended VDAs per AWS 
account per region up from 1500 to around 3500. So these are just a few of our feature enhancements on AWS and pay attention to our space or what's new space for more exciting things to come. So with that, Alan, let's jump into some of the other cloud providers. I think you're going to kick us off with Google. Yeah, let's do that. From the Google Cloud perspective, there's a lot of really exciting announcements. And when I take a step back and think about the Google partnership, a lot of people don't realize that we've been working with Google for a pretty long time. I remember going back seven, eight years ago, I worked with the Google Chrome team where Google Chrome was optimized for delivery in Zen App sessions, improved memory and CPU consumption. So when you were working on multi-shared hosts, it just ran very, very well. And now the next generation of our story is centered largely around Google Cloud. So we've made available the virtual apps and desktops premium service for Google Cloud, and you'll find that in the Google Cloud Marketplace. So this is a pure Google Cloud solution where the Citrix Cloud control plane based in the US is running on Google Cloud. Previously, taking advantage of our apps and desktop service, we we're running with an Azure backend and you could communicate with other clouds like AWS and like Google Cloud. Now you can run 100% within Google. So this is a, a better story, not just for the partnership, but also for you as our customer, providing greater performance, less latency, less hops, and that's just fantastic all around. You can see there that there's a new solution guide for Citrix DAS on Google Cloud, and Monica and I will be providing some uh, links, actually quite a few links towards the end of our presentation here today. We also wanna call it image portability service for Google Cloud. We'll touch on that in a little greater detail, but a fantastic capability to ensure that you're really ultimately managing a single truth of an image, a single golden image, regardless of where that image may end up. And then that last bullet there, you see suspend resume VMs in Google Cloud. This is a Google Cloud exclusive to the best of my knowledge and a really cool feature that will enable cost savings for our customers. So think about disconnected sessions and idle sessions. As long as the VM is up in a cloud provider, then, then the clock is running, right? You're paying for that. Well, with the ability to suspend or resume, you no longer have to worry about restarting VMs and users potentially losing data. They can have their instance suspended and then when they need to resume, all the applications come back exactly as it was before while you're ultimately saving money. And then towards the bottom, we'll touch on this in greater detail as well, but coming soon is provisioning services for Google Cloud, which is our true enterprise class network-based provisioning solution. So a lot of exciting announcements for, for Google Cloud. And I think we're, we're just getting started on the possibility for the next generation of the partnership. And it's amazing what we can do with Google. You think about the, the endpoints and Google owning Android and Chromebooks and then Google Cloud. It's just, it's amazing the, the potential in the Google ecosystem. And of course, we can't forget about Azure, certainly. We're upping the innovation on that front. These are just a few notable updates that have taken place over the past few months that we'll call out here. Uh, the first is Azure Trusted Launch Support. So this is available in the full configuration management interface. And if you choose to select an image with Trusted Launch enabled, you will work with the machine profile. And then that machine profile will have Trusted Launch enabled. This really improves the security of your Gen 2 VMs, which is the preferred VM family from a security perspective. It helps to reduce your attack surface and really ensure that you're positioning yourself well with defense and depth strategies. Uh, the next option I really like, changing certain VM settings after creating Azure VM catalogs. Uh, we've all done it at some point in time, right? You provision a catalog and you're like, oh my gosh, if I, if I only selected the right amount of RAM from the start, or if I only did the right licensing from the start. So there's a, a number of settings that you can now change after the fact, so you don't have to completely reprovision the entire catalog. So that's a great time saver there. Uh, then looking at support for storing Azure ephemeral OS disks. So I've seen quite a bit of buzz around ephemeral disks on, on uh, not just social media, but email threads lately as well. 
For those that aren't aware, ephemeral disks are essentially the included temporary or scratch disks that you have included with the VM instance type. And now Citrix DAS allows you to store the Azure ephemeral OS disk on cache disk or temporary disk. So basically we have a cost saving story here, but interestingly enough, there's also a performance saving story there too. And lastly, machine creation services support for non-persistent right back cache disk. So we added an option here for our MCS customers to use non-persistent right back cache disk. It's under the disk settings page, I believe, of the full configuration. And what you would do is you would go ahead and select this option if you do not want the right back cache disk to persist for persistent VMs. And basically at this point, we would be using the VM's temporary disk to host the right back cache. And there's a cost savings story here too. So a lot of great innovation across the board with all the three major hyperscalers, uh, Monica, and we plan to continue on that same pace in the upcoming months and quarters. All right, now here we're going to announce something that's free and we all like something that's free, right? Especially yes. for customers that are... <laughs> I know. Free is my favorite price, Alan. <laughs> that, that's good to know, Monica. <laughs> It, it, it's my it's my favorite price too, as long as you're getting something quality for free, and that that's is very absolutely fair. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's absolutely what we're doing here. We're introducing Citrix DAS standard free trials for one full week or seven days, and if you're a customer that's on premises today, 100%, and haven't really begun to explore DAS or the cloud, then this is absolutely for you. Or if you're watching us and you're a prospect then this is absolutely for you. Or if you're coming from some other DAS or VDI solution, then this is also for you. So it's complimentary. Again, we'll include all the links here so you don't necessarily have to screenshot this longer URL. And basically you'll bring your own Azure subscription. We'll provide up to three desktops that you can launch through this platform. And then should you choose to purchase the solution, you can do that direct or via the Azure Marketplace. So this is incredibly exciting, one, one week of full trial, and this is powered by our DAS solution, our quick deploy. It's the most turnkey way to leverage Azure and your entitlement on Azure, provisioning things like Windows 10 and Windows 11, including the multi-session variant. So really, really cool trial that we're excited to make available for free. Circling back on PVS or provisioning services, we've worked very closely with Azure and Google Cloud to architect and make what was traditionally designed as an on-premises network-based streaming solution available in the cloud. Incredible engineering effort here. And if you're a Citrix customer of, of any duration, especially on the enterprise space, you know about provisioning services and you use it day in and day out. To me, this has long been Citrix's secret sauce. I mean, I started back in 2007, shortly after we acquired the Ardens technology. And ever since then, over 15 years, this has been an incredible way to rapidly provision, deprovision, and lifecycle manage thousands or tens of thousands of VMs. So this technology is being made available across Azure and Google Cloud. Really excited about it. We have all the documentation and getting started guides and technical collateral to get you on that journey. On a related note, let's talk about the image portability service. So I alluded to this earlier, and as an IT admin, your goal is always to get to a single source of truth and reduce the amount of golden image sprawl, especially as you're looking at deploying on different platforms, both on-premises and with a public cloud provider, right? We don't wanna be managing a sales Win 10 image, both on-premises and in Google Cloud, and then again in Azure, because as you do that, the complexity and time involved to manage that goes up exponentially. So with the image portability service, you're managing that single truth that single golden image 
and then you're able to provision it across multiple public cloud providers and on premises and seamlessly handle the overall lifecycle. It's a fantastic solution. We encourage you to check it out and see how we can fit into your existing workflows and streamline some of your day-to-day -day tasks. Now we talk about cloud and hybrid cloud and we very much believe that that cloud is a journey and it means different things to different people. But regardless of where you're at on that journey or where you plan to go, we want to be there to help you. And that's where the automated configuration tool comes in. This is a cloud migration tool, but more so a desired state tool where you can aggregate and bring in data from one or more on-premises environments to a cloud site or bring in data from one cloud site to another cloud site and then continue to run this tool to ensure that the sites stay in sync, which is fantastic for workflows around environments like your dev, your test, your QA, and making sure that all the configuration is in sync. So a lot of great benefits. We continue to innovate around this tool, things like machine creation services support and the ability to export those catalogs, bring them into the cloud. And it's a free tool. It's included and it can help you on your cloud migration as well as desired state configuration journey with the cloud. All right. Well, we know that our IT teams are being tasked to do more with less these days, right? They're, they have more requests, more business requirements that are coming in fast and furious, and you have a workforce that is largely remote these days, and it seems like the challenges just keep piling up. And when you think about it, at the forefront of that really is the help desk teams in, in a lot of these cases, right? They're on the front lines ensuring that users remain productive, and you're ultimately able to meet business objectives and be agile and, and all these things. So to help with some of this around automation and workflows, we have the Citrix ITSM adapter for ServiceNow. Now we've had this for some time, and these are some recent enhancements that we've brought to this offering. The ability to access multiple customer IDs from a single ServiceNow instance. This is coming directly from customer feedback an ADM alert dashboard, so monitoring some of the networking details, supporting end user requests for desktop and application provisioning. So this is great because many organizations take advantage of solutions like Teams and Slack and others, and we can now handle and integrate with these types of systems and requests. So maybe a new employee is coming on or an existing employee just needs some other applications. Well, it's much more efficient, automatically kicks off the workflows and you're good to go. And the last one there, you can see support multiple Active Directory domains in a single Citrix virtual apps and desktop service environment. So in short, if you're using ServiceNow and you're using apps and desktops from Citrix, we'd encourage you to take a look at the ITSM adapter. I think you'll find it fits very nicely in your workflow and really allows you, even in, in the slightest bit, to have your teams focus more on strategic objectives as opposed to managing the day-to-day -day minutia of the requests that can feel overwhelming at times. All right, so now we're gonna talk about one of my favorite topics and that's user experience and specifically the HDX 3D Pro improvements that we've made in the release at the end of last year. That was the 21-12 release. So our teams have done an amazing job at really upping the game. Now we have improved frame rates that are more than double compared to previous releases. What that means is up to 120 frames per second at full HD 1080p resolution or 60 plus frames per second at 4K. And this is across demanding workloads in multi-monitor scenarios. Now, even if you don't need that kind of high level frame rates, which admittedly a lot of applications may not, we've still decreased the bandwidth consumption to help customers reduce cost and better handle constrained networks. So incredible innovations across the board. And on the next slide here, we'll actually be able to visually show that. So here you can see the, the top yellow line 
is Citrix HDX, and we're hovering around 80 FPS on a very demanding workload. And you can see the two lines below are anonymous competitive solutions that are quite a bit lower. So great interactivity. If you're using 3D Pro, we strongly suggest to upgrade to this LTSR version because there's great benefits that you can realize right out of the box. And to highlight some of these benefits in greater detail than what we can cover on today's webinar, we'd strongly suggest to check out this upcoming webinar entitled Powering Hybrid Work with NVIDIA and Citrix. This is led by our Citrix Ready team. It's on April 19th. And in this webinar, you'll hear from our lead engineer, Muhammad Dawood, seen, seen there on the bottom left, along with uh, Lee Bushin, a former Citrite as well, and now with NVIDIA on the bottom right. And they'll go through all these great innovations, as well as tips, tricks, and how you can tune HDX 3D Pro to best meet your needs. So that's absolutely one to check out if you're a 3D Pro customer. Okay, rounding out some additional HDX updates. We've got a few more here. Uh, the first one is API for BCR client detection. And here BCR is referring to browser content redirection. So this one is coming directly from customer feedback as well. And in the case where you have specific scripts or custom applications where there's video and interactive content where it makes sense to offload that to the endpoint, now you can go ahead and detect that and do that from an API perspective. So that's really cool because there's a, a scalability and a cost saving story associated with it. Moving to the right, UDP support for adaptive audio. So I've had the pleasure of working closely with the product management team lately on the release of adaptive audio and creating videos and collateral around it. Adaptive audio is one of the most comprehensive overhauls we've done to the Citrix audio subsystem in years. And adding UDP support for it ensures that we give that quote reliable nature of UDP with fallback, things like QoS, going through your network appliances. And it's a, it's a fantastic solution for, for VoIP and unified communications where there's not necessarily a, a formal way to optimize it like we have for Teams and others. So definitely check out Adaptive Audio and all the content that we've created there. And then the bottom three, you can see some of the innovations around Microsoft Teams and the optimization there. So that is the ability to app share your HDX 3D Pro apps when you're working in those accelerated sessions and maybe rotating a 3D model or doing something else that you need to share with some colleagues, as well as the ability to work with give and request control. And if you're working with teams in a multi-window uh, fashion, now you'll be able to support that and have all those windows optimized. So HDX continues to be a huge focus area for us. And by the way, check out our refresh landing page for HDX technologies at citrix.com forward slash HDX. All right, so last one for me, and I think we'll, we'll send it back your way, Monica, but we did wanna call out service continuity and some of the updates that we've done here. Service continuity is a true design for failure of the cloud management plane. So we rely on cloud heavily and cloud is great, but at the end of the day, there is a certain amount of control you give up with cloud and frankly, things can be out of our control. But we need to be able to account for these things, even on top of our very high SLA levels that we have. And that's what we've engineered here. We have this true design for failure such that if a cloud broker goes down and or there's an issue with the workspace service in Citrix Cloud, we can still allow end users to connect to backend resources so long as there's a direct network path, either locally on the LAN or by connecting through an available gateway or gateway pot. Okay, well, how do we do this? Well, in simple terms, what we do is we securely and silently deliver long live lease files to endpoint devices. And the lease duration is configurable by the admin. You can see that in the top screenshot, I believe it's between one and 30 days. And with the lease files available on these endpoints, in the event that there is a disruption, users may or may not see a simple informational dialogue as, as pictured in the other screenshot, but yet they'll still be able to connect to their resources ensuring that they can remain productive. So we've had this available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, 
And then you can see some additional platform updates that we're announcing here. The Workspace app for Android is hitting GA. We have iOS in public preview and the Workspace for web with the Citrix Workspace app for Mac and Safari is going into private preview. And the PM team always welcomes feedback here. So you can reach out to them at the email alias you see. All right, so I know that was a lot from, from my side. Monica, a lot of good updates, and I'll send it your way now. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alan. Yeah, I know that was a bit of a marathon, but I think, as you said, lots of updates. It's a true testament to the work that every single team here at Citrix is doing on bringing all of you the best quality product and the most like local product that we can. So, um Excited to keep on trucking here, and I've got a lot more announcements to round out the end of this webinar, but I wanted to kick it off with Linux. So for those of you who aren't leveraging Linux today, I pose the question to you as to why. There's a ton of great use cases for it. We have a Linux VDA, which is great, especially for developers to build their own apps and resources on top of. And we're continuously innovating and really working to be on par with that Windows VDA. So some things to call out here is we now have Mate desktop support for SUSE 15, dot three and 15.2. So you can specify mate as the default desktop on those OSs. Additionally, we introduced session shadowing a while back, which is really important for help desk personnel to troubleshoot user issues. And it was only on specified Linux distributions, but now we have it across Linux distributions. So no matter what you're operating on, any supported one from Citrix now has session shadowing. Additionally, the created local users with specified attributes on non-domain joined VDAs. So admins can do this now. Previously, when you opened a session that was hosted on a non-domain joined VDA, the VDA automatically created a local user with default attributes. So now you can specify attributes for that user. On the bottom left, you see the easy installation tool. So this is a GUI based Linux VDA installation or configuration tool. And it's optional besides today's easy install script, but it just really streamlines that process of you installing Linux VDAs. And then lastly, we've got the long-term service release. So Linux rolls out on its own cadence, but it's wrapped up into a similar cadence or the same cadence as our virtual apps and desktops releases. So 2203 came out this quarter and you get that extended life cycle and support and all of the great benefits that we talked about with the LTSR, but with Linux. Yeah, and one of the things I'd say on Linux, Monica, is that, like you mentioned, for those that maybe don't have Linux apps today, consider publishing a web browser, which is one of the most common published applications, and there's some great advantages to doing so from Linux. Totally agree. Yeah, and we have some really powerful browsing capabilities as well. Maybe, Alan, you and I should do a whole other webinar on that from secure browser to the enterprise-grade browser that's built inside the Workspace app. There's, there's a ton to do there as well. Totally agree. The next section I want to jump into is we've got some features here that really help improve the processes of admins. So firstly, I'm excited to showcase the Web Studio Cloud Health Check integration. So by running a simple health check within Web Studio, you can check the status of things like the universal injection driver, the session launch registry, um, the VDA software installation, and a lot more via a really straightforward report that you get. And we've also introduced the ability for Health Check to implement changes automatically or automagically, as we say here at Citrix, to specific issues to really, again, save admins time. But let's take a closer look at Health Check in action. So as you can see, I'm inside Studio and I selected Run Health Check and it automatically checks the health of a number of factors within your environment. You see it loading here. It can take a handful of minutes, but once it's done, you can then view your report. 
The middle column there showcases the state of each specific check that was run and its status. And then you see me here saving the report locally so that I can review it later. So super straightforward to, tool, but really, really powerful to just quickly understand the health of your environments and work workloads. Next, the VDA upgrade service um, streamlines management by allowing admins to upgrade their VDAs on persistent, remote PC, or MCS with dedicated disk workloads. And that's without the need for third-party software distribution tools or custom scripts. So this is a great Citrix Cloud service that's managed through Studio. And it allows you to perform VDA upgrades per the machine catalog or per machine on demand or even scheduled up to seven days in advance, which is awesome. And it also gives you the option to specify the upgrade window so you can spread all the upgrades out instead of executing them all at once so that your environment isn't overloaded when trying to do that. So this is a really great tool. Yeah, I absolutely love that that tool, Monica. What was previously an administrative burden trying to manage VDA upgrades across maybe hundreds or potentially a thousand or more dedicated VDAs is now so much more simple. I mean, it's it's great. I encourage everyone to check that out. Totally agree. Yeah, and just moving on to yet another great tool that I think is, you know, not used as much as I. I think people should take advantage of it. So our session recording tool has been around for years, but we've been continuing to make huge strides to improve management and especially decrease the storage that you need to contain these recorded sessions and to keep them on premises or inside of your environments. So in session recording 2203, we introduced session pre-recording abilities. So for context, we recently introduced specific events within sessions that would trigger a session to start recording, or even you can just create a list of all of the events that a user takes um, part in during a session. But when it triggered the recording, we realized that admins needed the ability to see what was happening before that event occurred so that they could get more context to help with security and compliance or even troubleshooting. So session re pre recording allows admins to do just that. And then also to those events that I was speaking of, we keep adding new events so that you can be even more granular in what you're viewing and what you're paying attention to within user sessions. So we've added things like file transfer, performance metrics, and pop-up windows all within a streamlined user interface within the recording policy console. So these two features have rounded out our dynamic recording story. So what I mean by that is from beginning to end, having the ability to, and flexibility to trigger these sessions via events to pre-record, to get the statistics in a graphical format has all come together now in 2203. So let's take a closer look at what I mean. Here I'm inside of the session recording policy console and I'm editing a rule that I have in here and I have an unexpected app crash set up to trigger an event within a session. Also in the box, I'm showcasing the pre-recording. So I have time parameters that I wanna set to show before this event happens. Now I'm the user and I get a pop-up that says my session is being recorded, so I'm fully aware. And I jump and I'm doing my scrolling, but I open an application. This one is meant to crash for the purpose of this demonstration, but I open an app and the next thing I know, it's crashing on me. I'm just scrolling through Citrix Docs as one does and my app crashes. Now I'm in the viewing console for the admin for session recording. I can go directly to that event happening and I can play back exactly what happened before this app crash, see what was going on and see what caused it. So I know it looks simplistic, but the fact that we've streamlined this process is gonna be huge for admins, huge for security and huge for compliance. So that's a really, really cool tool. 
Moving on to the endpoints themselves and the Workspace app itself. So in addition to the Workspace app for Windows LTSR that Alan described in such great detail at the beginning of this webinar, we are continuously working across our client platforms to bring you the latest and greatest technologies. So some notable improvements include extended monitor and mouse support on iOS devices and huge Teams optimization enhancements on Linux, Mac, and Workspace app for HTML5. So to that point, I just wanted to call out Workspace app for HTML5 specifically, as we're continuing to make enhancements here so users can do anything they need to do in a virtual environment, but they don't have to install anything on the endpoint. So this is an industry leading solution from Citrix and it's a super common use case that we see maybe if you're operating on a device that doesn't allow you to install the Workspace app or allow you to install applications in general. Or maybe a user needs to access their information and we can put security parameters around it but they don't have their device so they can securely access their information from someone else's device or maybe a kiosk that they or a device that they borrow but it's all secure within a virtual environment no download necessary so that's a super cool one to call out and to that point our workspace app team has really been working over the recent quarters and I mean over the years to deliver that end-to-end -end user experience via the Citrix Workspace app. So things like our extended multi-monitor support for tablets turns any mobile device into a fully functioning workstation and the global app configuration tool has been huge when telling this story as we've been, we've been gradually rolling this out across the OS's, but it allows for a simple storefront to workspace migration. And this centrally captures the settings of your individual stores, and you can push them out from a centralized location to the workspace service. So keep an eye for great updates in workspace app and just continuing to broaden this end-to-end -end user experience. So with those updates, Alan, I'm gonna hand it back to you for some some WIM enhancements. Yeah, definitely. Th thanks for that, Monica. I, I love those updates. Uh, I love those demos that you had in there. Great stuff all around. So from the WEM side or workspace environment management, as you may know, we have it available both on premises and as a WEM cloud service. And as is the case with mo most of our Citrix cloud services, we're able to iterate and innovate that much faster in the cloud. Now in Tech Preview, we have a brand new modern native web console for WEM. This is kind of similar to what we did with the primary studio console when we quote webified it. So I think this update is, is long overdue. It's a multi-phased approach where we're making available specific nodes and features of the comprehensive WEM console and a great reason to take advantage of, of WEM. Hopefully you are, if you're not, and you're a cloud customer, you can take advantage of the service. It's incredibly turnkey. If you're on premises, naturally you can, you can deploy and install the full self-contained traditional WEM. And then I also wanna call out some great innovation that the WEM team has been doing around things like connecting up unbound agents, additional log collection improvements, things like admin user stats. If you're working with scripts, the ability to more easily handle parameters WEM agent insights and much, much more. So uh, while the main announcement is around the new web console here, there's a lot of other great innovation happening. And as I may have mentioned before, if you're, if you're not using WEM, you're literally leaving money on the table. So we encourage you take advantage of WEM, optimize the performance, the scalability, and get the best possible value out of your current and future investment. And then branching out slightly to talk about some of the analytics updates, I first want to preface this by saying that analytics has had an absolutely incredible milestone year last year for 2021. We've seen incredible adoption, great use cases during the height of the pandemic. It continues to pay dividends for customers, both on the security front and the performance front. We'd encourage you to take advantage of a trial of, of analytics if you haven't done so already. 
Updates on the security side include RBAC roles. So being able to provide read-only access to security teams or maybe junior admins to browse through the data. Custom risk indicator templates. This is a great starting point to help customers better understand what metrics and things they should be looking at as they configure their environment. Uh, Monica great, gave us a great update around some session recording innovations, and we've had session recording integration within Citrix Analytics, but now we're able to bring in event integration. So uh, this is things like clipboard mapping and USB drive insertion that the session recording software is able to pick up on, and now it'll feed it back to analytics, which we can then run ML on with our algorithms and use that as part of the, the user scoring. So that, that's pretty cool. And then lastly, let's not forget about expanded CM integration. So this is huge because we realize that Citrix admins are not security admins, right? You, you typically have separate teams in most organizations handling those functions. And so we need to ensure that we're feeding that security data over to solutions like Splunk, Microsoft Sentinel, and now ones like Elasticsearch and others we can do via a connector. So a lot of great updates for analytics for security. And I also want to call out that analytics is available within the Asia pack management plane now too. So great news for customers in that region. And switching now to the performance updates. So just like we did our back roles for security analytics, now we have it for performance analytics here as well. The session timeline view, this one's really nice because you can see the historical view of sessions across specific dates and impacting factors that led to poor session performance. So see how you're, you're trending in that environment. Then one of my favorite new additions across analytics is endpoint network stats. So this goes back to the, the, the proverbial, my Citrix session is slow. And it was slow last Wednesday at 2 p.m. when I was running this app and I stood on one leg and I did, you know, all these other cr criteria factors that went on. What this does is it clearly shows via a line graph as the, the metrics are going into yellow and as they're going into red, things around latency, round trip time, even the Wi-Fi signal strength on the endpoint. So this greatly empowers your administrative teams and upper level health desk staff to look at the data and say, oh yes, now we know why your session was slow. It's because you were using a poor Wi-Fi signal. I could see it right here. Were you in a coffee shop? Were you somewhere abroad? Oh yes, yes I was. Or maybe you were using some other challenging network or there was some other factor that ultimately contributed to a problem on the endpoint side. Lastly, you can see connector and gateway pop stats. So for customers taking advantage of the gateway service, we're now able to provide additional visibility there for use cases as if a user maybe is incorrectly routed for whatever reason to the wrong gateway pop that's not closest, we can go ahead and surface that. All right, so back to you now, Monica, and let's go ahead and wrap things up. Yeah, thank you so much, Alan. I think we really leaned into the title of our webinar of what's new for sure. We have so much new and I'm glad we could cover it in this time. And we've also looked a little bit throughout our time together at what's next. But I did want to finish off our webinar here with um, a plug for an exciting other webinar about making the transition from VDI to DAS and that is coming on April 20th. So even better, our colleagues Carissa Stringer and Adam Lotz are delivering this webinar. So be on the lookout at citrix.com events to register. So that should be really good stuff coming soon. And as promised, we talked a lot about these magical links all tied up in a bow at the end. We should be dropping this if we haven't already in chat for you all to have and take with you. So everything we talked about today can be really easily accessible. So with that, I'm going to give the mic back to Louise so we can go to some of our favorite part and that is the Q&A. So Louise, back to you. Yeah, thank you, Monica. And we do have time for a handful of questions. So I'm just going to pick one out now to kick things off. Alan, this one's for you. 
Uh, can you tell us more about the costs of hybrid rights? For example, is there an additional cost? Yeah, so thank you for that one, Luis, and definitely appreciate everyone entering the questions throughout the webinar here. Uh, in terms of the new hybrid rights, there's no cost if you have hybrid rights today already as part of your transition and trade up. Now, if you do want it beyond the initial transition and trade up period, then you would renew your hybrid rights option at an additional cost there. Um, so depending on where you are, we can get, get you sorted and on the right path. We suggest to check with your Citrix account manager or partner for additional details on that one. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Alan and Louise. So I'm also looking through these great questions we're getting. I see one that asks if WEM 2203 is a part of the Virtual Apps and Desktops 2203 LTSR. So I did want to describe in the long-term service release, we have components considered baseline and compatible, where baseline components are core to the LTSR and must be on the 2203 version to get the full benefits, the extended support and life cycle of the LTSR. And then compatible can be used effortlessly in conjunction with the LTSR, but they don't qualify for that extended support and cumulative updates. So with WIM 2203, that is considered a compatible component. So it works within the LTSR environment, but you don't get that extended support there. Awesome, thanks for taking that one for us, Monica. Um, there was a few questions that came in around unified communication solutions, and I know I cover teams. Some questions were around the theme of, hey, we use another unified communication solution, so what about those solutions? I do want to mention that we continue to work with other leading unified communications vendors like uh, Cisco, Avaya, Zoom, uh, and, and many others to provide that joint value and an optimized approach in your DAS and VDI deployments. I'll also note that there's a generic fallback capability. There's browser content redirection as well. So a lot of great things we can do. And of course, our approach is to always optimize these solutions if possible so you get everything nice and secure in your image and you're offloading the voice and video content to the endpoint, you literally get the best of both worlds. Uh, check out the docs and our tech zone site for more information around that. Yeah, thanks, Alan. I know that's a big one. Um, I also got a few on the VDA upgrade tool. So here it says, is the upgrade tool only for workloads in the cloud or on-prem too? So the VDA upgrade service is a cloud service ma managed through Cloud Studio. And I will say this feature isn't for on-prem Citrus Virtual Apps and Desktops 2203 long-term service release sites, but if you're using the 2203 LTSR VDA within Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops service, you can leverage this feature to perform future upgrades to 2203 CUs or current release versions. So mixing the LTR, LTSR VDA with your service sites is super common and you can use the upgrade service there. Very cool. And uh, let me see if I, I've got one more here. A question around Citrix Cloud and when Citrix Cloud could move to this 2203 LTSR or what the take is there. Um, in essence, the Citrix Cloud management plane can be thought of as versionless. It's more agnostic in terms of the VDA version and other components that you can run. Uh, we suggest absolutely taking advantage of the 2203 LTSR components with your Citrix Cloud subscription and the apps and desktop service. It's a great version and you can uh, use it throughout your environment. Yeah, thank you, Alan. I hate to cut off this discussion, but we are right at time. I do want to mention we've had a ton of great questions even come in toward the end here, Alan and I will be putting together a Q&A blog that should come out in the coming weeks. So if we didn't get your question answered live, we will do our best to put it in that blog. So keep a lookout on our blog site for that. But with that, Louise, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you to wrap us up. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. And that is all that we have time for today. So I just wanted to take a moment to say a huge thanks to all of you for joining us. And of course, to our presenters, Monica and Alan, for those great updates. Just to reiterate, 
that we have recorded today's session and that recording will be made available and posted as soon as we can get that live. And once again, thank you everybody for your time today and we do look forward to seeing you on a future webinar.